here's my here's my commitment to you guys is I will practice this guy I will practice this I'll give myself what like a month I hope things don't go wrong I think I'll be fine so I've almost lost a solid week <sighs> I feel like I've never seen this music in my life what happened I think the battle right now is just to stay calm and relaxed about this so I have lost probably about three or four days of practice <laughs> I may have done something a little bit dumb. I think I'll be fine. I think so. <sighs> okay, recently I did a live stream to launch my brand new flute learning platform. If you haven't checked it out yet, then go check it out. But in that live stream, I decided to sight read a piece of music that I was fairly sure that I could not sight read. And so this happened. that moment where I would not get by without practice and figuring out what these chords are. But then I was in the moment, I was feeling kind of brave and bold and I made a promise that I don't know was the best idea. Here's my here's my commitment to you guys is I will practice this guy. I will practice this and I will record it and let's see what happens. I'll give myself what like a month? A month? But I'm a firm believer, you make a promise, you don't go back on your word. So I am learning the Tuffinal Mignon Fantasy Mignon Mignon How do you how do you say that? Anyway, I will learn how to say that too, but I am learning it in one month. Hi everybody, my name is Tatiana and this is the flute practice, a space to inspire your practice. And today apparently we're doing it by actually showing you my practice. Okay, no more procrastinating. Let's get to work. As much as I would love to just dive straight into playing, uh, that is not the best use of my time. Rather, I'm actually going to start by doing some planning. That's right, without my flute, I'm actually going to plan my approach to the next 30 days. I like to think of there being three parts to practice. There's a note learning phase where we're just learning the actual notes. There's a polishing phase where I'm kind of polishing up the notes and getting things kind of perfected or getting them more polished and then there's the performance practice stage where I practice playing through it and actually putting it all together and performing it and I want to spend about two weeks so 14 days on that note learning phase I want to spend about seven days on that polishing phase and then the last seven days playing it through putting it all together and of course doing some more polishing work as well in the note learning phase I'm going to do a couple of really important things first of all I'm going to work backwards so I'm actually going to start from the end of the piece and work my way backwards. Why? Because the ending is very often the most difficult because by the end of the piece you're usually the most tired so you want to know this part the best and it'll also stop me from just playing through it pointlessly, right? I'm also going to break it up into small sections and learn it section by section at a time. And of course it goes without saying but I'm going to practice it slowly. So here is the score. There are about 380 measures more or less. So if I divide that up over 14 days and yeah, I'm going to be realistic and say that I've got like six days of a week that I will realistically practice if maybe only five. Let me be realistic. Let's say I'm going to practice five out of seven days in a week because you know life. Okay so I've got 10 days. So over 10 days I got to learn 380. That's I don't know why I have a calculator out. That's actually really easy. That is 38 measures a day, right? No, I'm not double checking. No. So 40 new measures. Of course, I do want to revise the stuff that I have already learned as well. Okay, so look at this last section. I'm going to go back. This is a repeat. So I'm actually going to make this first section my day one practice like that. Day nine. So yeah, I'll probably have to revise this plan a little bit as I go, but I have left some room here, hopefully in case I need a little bit of breathing room and things go wrong. I hope things don't go wrong. But let's get learning. Okay, I'm going to start by learning this, as I mentioned, 
from the very end. Now, I'm also not going to learn the whole last section in one go. I'm actually going to break that up into smaller bits as well. So, for example, I might just learn these last couple of measures to start with, just practice them, play them through really nice and slowly and see how we go. Cool, what arpeggio is that? I'm going to figure it out. It's a D7 arpeggio of some kind. Now I really want to know what I'm playing, why? Because I want to free up brain space so that I don't have to think about it so much. It's the best way to learn. Put it into a pattern that you kind of recognize or do recognize so that you can remember it easier and quicker. Okay. And this is how I'm going to continue to learn my music, bit by bit, slowly. It is day four of learning these notes. That is to say, I still have to learn day four's notes. It's going well, mostly. It's going well. I must say I'm really grateful to know my scales and arpeggios because that is making this process a lot easier. I'm finding it's easier to learn the actual notes, but it's also easier to remember what I've done the day before. I'm going to play a little bit for you guys where it's at. It's still fairly slow. I feel like I've never seen this music in my life. <laughs> what happened? What happened day three? We were doing so well. We were getting along so well. I shall persevere. You see what I mean? Those scales and arpeggios are very, very helpful in this section. Okay, I'm gonna practice. See you guys soon. Seriously, the second I switch off my camera, I'm like, oh, I can play this. Doing good, things are still slow. Things are still very slow. And I will give you another little sneak peek into how things are sounding. I'm not worrying too much about breathing at the moment because I know that once I speed this up and things start to feel more comfortable in terms of the notes, I think the breathing is going to sort itself out. Ah, I have marked exactly where my B flat key should be coming on and off because this is the one bit of information that I think is crucial for me to have in here. And then I need to actually practice moving that B flat key backwards and forwards and not just relying on my markings. So let me do that. I feel like I'm sliding that B flat key on and off. No! No! What would I say to my students? Practice slowly, Tats. Practice slowly. So it is day 10 today of this journey and I am only learning the music from day 7, which means I am, yeah, a little bit behind. I'm not worried. I don't think because I know that I have done the majority of the work. I haven't been feeling so well the last few days so practice has been a bit slow. I think it's just allergies to be honest and thanks to the wonders of modern medicine I have taken some medication and I'm feeling a lot better. Um, so I am going to do a little bit more today. I think the battle right now is just to stay calm and relaxed about this. Um, I've got to really fight not to go into that like panic practice where I'm just trying to like play everything too fast and trying to play the bits that I have done too fast because I'm trying to like reassure myself that it's going to be okay. I have to stay clear of that and just kind of stay on track, stay on course um, and just keep calmly and patiently working. I know that if I get behind, no matter how much like I stress and push and fight, it's not going to get there any quicker. So I just have to stay calm. Just 
Just checking my rhythm there. I'm having a little bit of fun here and being a little bit naughty because I'm jumping to the beginning. But I figured since I only have technically got two more days of material to learn, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I've been very disciplined. I've just learned the final day of my notes, which means, haha, -ha, I have learned all the notes of this piece, which is so exciting. Cody, are you coming in here to celebrate with mom? Cody's excited too. Say hello. I don't think she's that excited. It is time for me to start some polishing work. I'm actually kind of excited about this phase. I feel like this is where it like really gets fun, but also quite frustrating. Okay, so here's my strategy for polishing. So the first thing is I want to be very intentional about this process. Like I don't want to just be playing through stuff and kind of falling into the habit of wasting my time like that. I'm very short of time. It is very close to the end of this month already. So I know I don't have a huge amount of time to just kind of mess around and play through stuff. So that's my first plan. To do that, I'm going to utilize some of the tools that I just know work really well. And I'm going to try and be as creative in this process as possible. So I do want to spend a few moments planning here again. I spent quite a lot of time planning in the note learning phase before I started and I think that really paid off. So I'm going to do something similar here because I feel like I need a plan of action so I really don't waste time. So for this first section these are really going to come down to doing some nice drills. I'm just going to be finding some of the issues probably already starting to put it together with the accompaniment this whole section I am going to really practice using uh, this handy friend over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start playing this really 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 slowly with the metronome and gradually speed it up that's one of the strategies I want to use um I'll probably practice bits of it in different rhythms just to make sure my fingers are really secure and know what they're doing I'm looking at this I'm like did I ever play this but I know I did but did I? I'm really on the lookout for like moments where my fingers are even just like a fraction insecure or like unsure because I know those are going to fall apart when I perform this. So I'm already now starting to really think towards that performance and be like, I'm not happy with like I made it. I'm happy with like I really know this and I'm comfortable. So, looking out for those. Moving on. Rhythm as well. practice that but yet I just thought I'd continue on and see what happens I know I'm wasting time wasting mm -hmm. tits <laughs> but also fun I cannot believe I am sick again oh it seems like every time I try and do one of these challenges I am doomed to get sick but I have decided that while I am down and out, I am going to spend some time listening to some recordings. Let me try and use the time that I can, if I can get the energy to do so. <laughs> uh, why, why, why? Okay, I just listened to the amazing Philippe and I'll play it. I think I'm pretty depressed right now. <laughs> I have so much work to do. Uh... Okay. I'm back. Sort of. Not yet 100% healthy, but I am going to start picking up my flute again. So I have almost lost a solid week. I don't yet know what this is going to do to my timeline or if I'm still going to manage my ambitious, already ambitious goal of learning a piece in a month. 
but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to imagine I have a recital coming up in a week that I do have to be ready for, right? And that happens sometimes. Like sometimes you just have something coming up, you have a recital or a concert and you can't change the date. You can't push it back. So I'm going to imagine that that is the case and I'm preparing for that. Come hello high water and let's see what happens. Now, even though I am still sick, I actually know that playing the flute while feeling like this is actually a really good thing. It can help to open up the lungs a little bit and actually get everything going. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take it from the top and start doing some nice polishing work again. Let's see how this goes. buzzy definitely feel like listening to those recordings helped a lot like it just gives me a good idea of some things that I could do with this music um, so that's been that's a little bonus of getting sick is that I slowed down enough to just spend some time listening to recordings now it's so tempting for me to want to just do things up to speed as they were it's so tempting for me just to want to play through stuff and just kind of try and see where it's at and you know like how far it's come and I guess there's some merit in doing that but because I'm really short on time I'm not even gonna waste my time you know, basically confirming that I cannot play most of this <laughs> yet. slowly slowly I just did exactly what I said I wasn't going to do which was play through everything really fast <sighs> oh this is really killing my coughing okay this needs a lot of work I think I'm basically just going to have to really be disciplined, go back to square one and just calm down, slow down, do everything really slowly. <sighs> I've got a week. I've got a week. So I've got a week. Mm, okay. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Okay. Quick update. Just had a pretty good practice session. So yeah, things are kind of starting to come together. I feel that like moment where everything just starts to like knit together. Still waits to be seen whether or not I'm going to have this thing performance ready for next week. Some moments I'm like, yeah, I've got this. Other moments I'm like, oh my word. The other interesting thing that I have been doing and making use of is rhythms, practicing in different rhythms. And I just wanted to show you a little bit of this because actually it's such a useful little technique. So there's this one particular little passage in here that, well, my fingers do not know at all. It's a little triplet um, figure. <laughs> Can't even play it slowly. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this now is I'm actually going to put it into a bunch of different rhythms. So I'm going to start off with... Love rhythms because it really trains your fingers to actually practice these little combinations really quickly but distracting yourself with actually playing other little combinations slower and also just keeping my brain interested and not letting it get bored and I love also regrouping things this can be quite a good thing to do that felt very impossible a few moments ago so easy ah, my nail look at that if you guys wonder why I go on about Lizzo's nails being so long I cannot play the flute with a nail that is this long I don't know how she does it so I'm going to go and cut those it is time little nail clippers 
Okay, I am officially starting to perform this piece. It is definitely not yet up to speed. It is still pretty under tempo. Um, and I'm doing this in like sections, like I'm definitely not doing all of it in one go yet, but I am planning to play through the whole thing from beginning to end tomorrow for the first time in one of our performance classes. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Um, yeah, like, I don't know if I'm going to get some of these bits up to speed, so I might, like, up to speed is relative, right? Like, I'm playing this with Tom Play, so I'm stuck to Tom Play speeds. I probably wouldn't play some of these sections as slowly, but I also wouldn't play some of these sections as fast. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's close. We're getting close, guys. Really close. <laughs> dodgy stuff in there. I've got a day. One day. The day has arrived. It is time for me to perform this piece from beginning to end. Now before I go into my performance I'm actually going to give you guys an evaluation of how it went. And I'm doing this before I perform because to be honest with you we so often want to evaluate our progress based on one single performance when really that is just kind of a single moment in time. And rather we should be looking at all the progress that we know we have made up to this point. And I have to say I'm pretty pleased with that progress on the whole. Would I perform this piece in a concert tomorrow? Yeah definitely not. In fact I would love to tell you that I need just another week, like just that week that I've lost, but the truth is I probably would need a good month or so extra just to let everything kind of settle down, simmer down, and let everything kind of mature and seep in. And I know that I spoke about the three kind of parts of practice, the note learning, the polishing and the performing, but I've kind of been reminded this month that there is a fourth stage to this, which is that kind of maturing stage where you just let it kind of settle down and allow it to really just sink in. I would say at this stage, I'm kind of like just in that performance stage. I've had a couple of run throughs of the piece and I'm pretty sure there's going to be some mistakes, lots of them. As I said, I'm actually pretty proud of the work that I've done this month. I think that I've worked well for the most part, especially considering that I've been sick and I've had all kinds of other gigs and concerts and stuff going on. So let me stop stalling and let's get into the performance.
Not bad.